I'm going to explain the revised NIOSH lifting equation on this video. It was developed in 1994 and is still used today. And it has also a lot of ergonomics background behind it. So it will give you a lot of idea about generally manual material handling. This document is about 164 pages long. I will try to explain this in just few uh, minutes hopefully. So NIOSH did research and found out that the when someone is lifting their um, the it can create an ergonomic issue because of eight different things can go wrong. So you may be lifting too much load, uh, it may be too far away from the body, it's maybe too down to the floor, and then the total amount of lift, maybe you are lifting all the way from the floor to the some maybe your head height or something and then the if you are twisting your back that also significantly reduce your ability to uh, lift some load and how frequently you are doing that task and how long do you do that lift and of course um, how easy or difficult it is to hold that uh, object when you are lifting it so these are the eight things that affect someone's lifting ability NIOSH did also a research. This equation NIOSH developed based on 40 percentile uh, female strength. So in an ideal condition, lifting condition, which would be between this and this range. So maybe a female is lifting very close to her body, some objects here to here, and then that person can lift 51 pounds. So a 40 percentile strong female in an ideal posture can lift 51 pounds. So now I started with this 51 pounds and then uh, anytime this condition goes unfavorable in terms of maybe the object is too far away from the body then it reduces someone's ability to lift that 51 pounds so significantly reduces that so now the reason why now she is 41 40 percentile female strength because people who work in lifting they are assuming that they will be stronger than a 40 percentile female so now you know that these eight different things affect your body let me explain some of the common mistakes that people make when they measure these distances one of these is the horizontal location which is commonly uh, not measured correctly the definition for horizontal distance is from the body to that object now however from which reference point to the body is this from the front of the body or back of the body so the way you measure the horizontal distance you draw a line between the two ankle joint like this and then the distance is the middle of the ankle joint to that object so basically this is the middle of the ankle joint and this is the object now the when you say object is it the front of the object or back of the object it's not it's the knuckle of that person so it's the hand distance it's the knuckle distance so it's the middle point of the two ankle joint and the knuckle distance that's the horizontal distance now vertical distance are not that mistaken so frequently it is the distance from the floor to the object now Again, is it the bottom of the object or top of the object? It actually the knuckle distance. So it's the knuckle distance from the floor. So that's the vertical distance. How far is travel is simply basically your knuckle movement. So maybe the object is sitting on the floor right here. You hold right here. So this is where your knuckle is. And this is the final posture. So that would be the distance travel. Asymmetry angle is from the sagittal plane. So how far you are moving either side. So that would be the asymmetry angle and then lifting frequency is averaged over 15 minutes. So you count the number of lifts and then divide by 15 then you get frequency number of lift per minute. And uh, the lifting duration is also one of the confused terms in NIOSH lifting equation. NIOSH divide this into three categories. So one is the short duration which is less than one hour and then then the moderate which is uh, one to two hours and then long 
duration lifting is two to eight hours. Now here is a trick. Assume that you lift for 30 minutes and then you take 20 minutes break and then you lift another 45 minutes. Should it be under the short or the moderate? If you add these two, it's one hour and 15 minutes, so that way it's gonna be in the moderate. If you consider them separately, then it's a short distance. Now the criteria for considering them separately is the, is the person taking one and a half times more rest. So if you are lifting 30 minutes, one and a half times of that would be 36 minutes. So if you take 36 minutes break after 30 minutes of lift, and then you again do 45 minutes, then each of these can be treated separately, and they are basically short uh, duration. Coupling classification, basically how easy or difficult something to hold. So it's not really um, that difficult to figure out. If it has a good hang handle, then it has a good coupling. Uh, if it's not, then it has fair or poor. Um, in the openeducator.com, I have a link to the document of the Naur's lifting equation, so you can see the uh, how to figure out which coupling to treat good, which one to treat poor. Now, once you figure out all these uh, distances and all these definitions, you measure all this stuff, then you can use this equation to figure out the multiplier. And then, uh, or you can use the tables to find the multipliers. Now, I have posted a link to this table directly from the Center for Disease Control website. So if something gets updated, you can get always that updated table. Once you find out all of these multiplier based on that measurements you have done, you can calculate it how much someone can safely lift, which called recommended weight limit. Assume that we found the recommended weight limit for a particular posture is 20 pounds. Let's say someone is lifting 40 pounds on that posture. So that person is lifting two times more than the recommended limit. So as you can see on the following table, uh, if it's less than one, the lifting index, which means that they are lifting less than the recommended weight limit, so they should be okay. Anything in between one and three is not really okay. Um, should be redesigned. And then if it goes more than three times, then it becomes unsafe. It's not the ergonomics issue anymore. It is a point to it, it reaches a point where it cannot be as a it's not really an ergonomic issue anymore, it's just simply unsafe. So, someone should stop doing it, should be immediately redesigned or avoided. In the next couple of videos, I'll give you some example of single uh, lifting task, also multi multi task um, lifting evaluations. And then we'll see you there.